Eric. I'm Nathan. And we are Notes and Nerds. So today, it's our first episode. We're going to film here, and we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. What are we going to be talking about exactly? First today, we're going to be talking about the storage, the memory, the pros, and the cons. Really? Now see, we would, we would talk about the hardware, but hardware's been out Everybody right knows. Here. Everybody freaking knows. So we're not going to even bother with that. So let's go ahead and get started on the uh, uh, storage and the memory, and go from there. So what are we looking at, Nathan? Okay, for the storage on a high drive, we're looking at 500 gigs. Uh, the memory for both of them are uh, 8 gigabytes of... Yeah, it looks like uh, GD, uh, GDDR5 and GDDR3. Uh, now, here's the thing, folks. The PlayStation 4 is using DDDR, uh, DDR5. Say that five times fast. Uh, and the Xbox One is using DDR3. Now, here's the big kicker. DDR3 has been ran, that's been out for quite a few years now. Everybody's got it in their computer, or probably doesn't anymore, because they are using DDR5, especially the dinosaur. Ones. The older computers that you find in Walmart in the boxes, those are still using DDR3 usually. But your high-end computers are using DDR5. The reason why is the throughput, or the bandwidth. They're pushing so much information at one time, it's freaking ridiculous. It's like uh, trying to drive down the Autobahn on a bicycle uh, with the uh, Xbox's uh, DDR3, uh, the Autobahn being DDR5. Um, just massive amounts of uh, air, uh, space for all that data to be pushed through. The other kicker, the Xbox One, 8 gigabytes, okay, same amount. You'd think, okay, well, so the speed's a little different, but here's the problem. Xbox One is dedicating three, yes, one, two, three gigabytes directly to the operating system. So that leaves five gigabytes only for gaming itself. That's a real kicker, though, because of the fact that, you know, if you're trying to, if you're a game developer and you're wanting to maximize the amount of uh, space that you have for your games, uh, this way you can deliver beautiful quality graphics. Beautiful high res textures, uh, sharp images, sharp images. Well, that kind of goes with the textures and the resolution, yes. but also your audio. And you know, if you have less space to work with your audio, it's like imagine having an awesome rock band trying to play in your closet versus playing in the uh, in a stadium. Stadium, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah, real quick, I just want to say sorry for all the sweating, folks. Our studio has no air conditioning, so bear with us. So okay, so. I mean, right off the bat, both of them have 500 gigabytes of hard drive space. Okay, I'm going to say one thing, though. Um, when you look at the fact that the operating system for the Xbox One, which is a uh, patchwork uh, Windows 8 kind of thing going, I mean, it's got three technical operating systems, which is ridiculous. I start thinking about the hard drive. But, oh, sure, they both have 500 gigabytes. But we're running into the problem. You have a dedicated operating system that is Windows 8, which usually uses anywhere from two to four gigabytes right off your own hard drive on a uh, laptop or desktop computer. I suspect, and there's also all kinds of other frilly, frivolous things that Microsoft threw in. I don't think you're going to have the full 500. I don't see PlayStation 4 having the full 500 either, but I think it's going to be a significant difference that you're going to have more space with PS4. So, PlayStation 4 versus Xbox One so far. I'm PS4. So far, PS4. Yeah. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of the PlayStation 4 first, Nathan. Okay. We'll talk about the, the pros first. We got the games will still be on the disc. Which is great because I love downloadable media like on the tablets and stuff, but it's nice to have a physical disc. Those you do buy will remain on the disc. Um, you can share these games with your friends. You know, hey, you want to play a game? Take it to your house and play it. Yeah, that's something Sony actually made a joke about that, where they had uh, two representatives from Sony, and it was the instructions and steps on sharing a game. Step one was hand it over. Step two was play the game. Unlike Xbox's current, well, their previous DR number. We'll talk about that after a bit. Okay, we have... Not released, but they're in the process of 140 games. That Come on, guys. That, that's a gamer's dream right there from the get-go right out of the gate. Within the first year, 140 games will be released for the PS4, giving it a huge advantage for games. I mean, even when the PS3 and the PS2 were released, 
and even the Xboxes when they were released, that was 140 games right off the bat. And I remember growing up as a kid, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, the original PlayStation, seeing 140 freaking games right off the bat like that, you would have done wet yourself because that is such a rollover. Because Get it at a candy store. No kidding. So anyway, after that, we're looking at... Okay, they're announcing to be using a cloud-based game image in the partnership of... Guy K. Guy K. Pronounce it however you want. <laughs> that would allow the PS3 and the PS4 owners to play the PS3 games immediately streaming through the internet. Okay, best explain this. There's been a service out for the last three, four years called uh, OnLive, um, where you would uh, play a game like, let's say, Call of Duty on your laptop, your tablet, your desktop, but you don't install a darn thing. It streams directly over the internet with almost no language, surprisingly well done. Um, and so that's the intent that they're going to do here. So this way, and there really isn't anything established yet where, okay, let's say I have a stack of PS3 games right here that I spent like, you know, 60 bucks a game, you're dang well around close to a thousand bucks. Do you have to purchase those games over again? Is it a five dollar rental fee, or do you actually, if you register, if you're one of those people that are rare that registered their game, is it automatic? True. Okay, what we got up next? You don't need to log in every twenty four hours for the game system to stop working. We'll get into that with the other, the Xbox One, which you have to do that with. Yeah, the, the old DRM on the Xbox, you had to uh, log in every 24 hours, but like Nathan said, we're gonna go into a little more detail over that here in a minute. Uh, the new DioShock controls, shares Dual buttons, shock. and the, DualShock. DualShock, okay, maybe two. Okay, the DualShock, got to find out where I am, it allows uh, the post-game footage and screenshots. That I saw on uh, back in February or so when Sony did their PlayStation 4 reveal. Oh my God, that was an awesome show. Uh, it was an hour long. They, you know, it, now I want to talk about the comparison between the Sony and the X, uh, Microsoft show uh, when they did that. But when they talked about it. You hit the share button on the controller, and it literally will share in you know in game live footage, post game footage. Uh, basically, consider it your social bragging rights that, you know, let's say you and Nathan and I are playing a game and Nathan's stuck and I just totally kicked the boss's ass. And Nathan's like, I don't believe you. That boss is impossible to beat, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, share. Yeah, what's up now, huh? Yeah, who's your daddy? So then, you know, whatever. That is an awesome concept. And they're actually using Ustream for that service. Uh, I see that taking off hugely because, I mean, come on. Trophies are one thing, but a visual gameplay video to brag about and post to the internet, that's... Your that's, gaming trophy. That is a trophy. When you blow up the boss, you know, like, you know, somebody says, like, well, if you've done a couple, you have to, it's like an hour-long boss. I'd be in five minutes. Okay, well, there's your proof. This is the perfect, the perfect old saying, in your face. Exactly. All right. Okay, next up, the controllers include a a motion touchpad that uh, works for the PlayStation camera to place near a TV. Yeah, the touchpad, uh, basically think of like um, your, on your, like I'll show my tablet here. This is the Asus tablet, by the way, but anyway, it's got a little trackpad like a laptop. On the PlayStation controller, there's going to be on the face right here, a similar uh, situation. They haven't really gone into detail what they're going to do with it, but I expect to see a lot of uh, interface controls with the uh, PlayStation 4's uh, uh, UI and stuff like that. Um, and the motion controls, PlayStation Move is basically still alive, but on the top of the controller there's going to be this bar that's going to be one of four colors, just like the old PlayStation Move controller where you had the ball on top of the controller, and it would either be blue, red, yellow, or purple, or whatever, or green, or something like that. Whatever colors they were, this way the camera would detect it and give accurate, because it was like a uh, like Wii controller, but millions of times more accurate because of that ball on the camera. I know you've missed one on there. Uh, oh, friends can watch you play games. Um, that one ties into that whole share button I was talking about. In so, your face. Yeah. So... Now we go to the cost. Okay, what do we got for this? We got, you can't play PlayStation 3 games. Backwards compatibility is pretty much dead. Um, 
So, I mean, we were spoiled with that for years. I mean, Atari, you know, they gave backwards compatibility on the old Atari 7800s where you could play 2600 games. It also cost a sacrifice. Uh, the sound on the uh, 7800, which should have been leaps and bounds better, mm -hmm. sounded almost exactly like 2600 games. If you're old enough to remember those, beep, beep, bloop, bloop, beep, is pretty bad. When the Nintendo Entertainment System came out, the sound was actually pretty good. But it was no comparison. So yeah, backwards compatibility is dead. Next one. You have to play PlayStation Plus in order to play, which is five dollars a month. To be specific, it's five dollars a month for online ac uh, access to the PlayStation Plus account for online play with friends. Yeah. So, like, if Nathan is living in New York and I'm living in uh, Los Angeles, uh, but we want to play some game, I can't. I don't, I don't have anything off the top of my head, but we're going to so play a game. Mario or whatever. I was going to use Mario, but that's Nintendo. Um. So anyway, we're playing a game together, but in order to play that game in uh, uh, online, we have to pay the five dollars a month service fee, which is five bucks a month. Uh, that's a pack of smokes, and oh well, I think I could sacrifice. I could I could give up a pack of cigarettes a month for that. <laughs> okay, next we got the PlayStation camera is not included with the console. It will cost an extra sixty dollars. That's a con, but at the same time, is it a con? See, here's the thing. We're going to talk about the pros and cons for the uh, Xbox One in a minute. But I mean, the camera. If you're not big into the games that require a camera, or you don't even use games that require the camera. Are you really missing much? Yeah. Because, I mean, there are, uh, the way Sony's going is a lot of the games, if not all the games, are going to have some kind of motion sensing kind of technology involved. But it's not necessary to enjoy the game. You don't have to have it. So I, I put that in a position where it's not a pro, but it's not a con. It's just a peripheral that you're going to have to buy. It's take it as it is kind of thing. Next one. There isn't. We found three cons. Three cons out of like 10 to 12 positives. That is really hard to come by because, I mean, every console that's ever been released over the years, there's always been something to complain Could about. Could this be a very good product? I'm honestly looking at that, but I want to hold off my judgment for just a few more minutes. Till the end of the show. So let's go on ahead and talk about the pros and cons of the Xbox, Xbox One. Well, we got, like we said, the storage is 500 gigs. It is 8 gigabytes. And the pros are... Oh my gosh, just kind of looking at this before we go too far. We, we just, Nathan just said, pros for the uh, PS4, long. Cons, sure. Check this out. Okay, we have, you can use Skype. Next one. Connect is included with the Xbox One bundle. Again, is that a pro or is it a con? Everybody who doesn't know what Connect is, Connect is that little camera sensor bar that you got for the Xbox for motion games. Um, I'll give you why I don't know if I could count as a pro here in a minute. Okay, Abel's voice activation command with the Xbox Live. Basically saying, Xbox Live, what is the weather today? And Xbox is going to go to all you know space or 2001 a space odyssey on you and hope it doesn't start saying i'm sorry dave i can't do that <laughs> it gives a whole new possible meaning to the red ring of death okay next one we got xbox 360 gold membership will be transferred to the xbox one that is a good pro because if you have an xbox 360 currently you have the xbox gold membership which is i think 15 dollars a month uh correct me if i'm wrong i think our cons talk about that later you know you don't have to worry about setting up a whole new account but that really isn't a pro that's a no duh because that's what happened with the Xbox and the Xbox 360. I, if I remember correctly, it's been a while, and I don't have the ability to research it right yet, that there was some hiccups between Xbox to Xbox 360, Xbox Live, Xbox Gold account transfers. But Microsoft is po uh, posing that as a pro because it's going to be a fluid transfer. No worries. And there's, but I, I, again, I'm going to put this as a, a pro or a con. 
what about 360 consoles that you might, let's say you're one of those who's going to have your 360 console and your Xbox One console that's uh, set up together, and you're going to be, first of all, going, why bother? Well, again, I'm going to uh, blow up a con for you right now. Got a, uh, spoiler, there's no backwards compatibility again. So you're going to want them because, I mean, there's if you're still thinking this Xbox is going to keep having new games come out for 360, and, you know, the One's going to be right there, and you're going to still want to play your 360 because not all the games are going to be out yet for uh, the One. Are you going to be able to keep your account on both, or is it transferred there? That could be a huge con that we don't know about yet. Right. Next. This is good for people with smartphones. You can use a smartphone for a second screen for gaming. Which is really an awesome yeah, idea. A lot of uh, awesome. Nintendo is doing that with the That was a big thing with the DRM for proof of ownership. And that's one of those things. The 24-hour check-in period has been, I don't know if it's been uh, relaxed or if it's been completely booted. So this way, gamers don't have to worry about that. Now. These two actually go hand in hand. The play online and to check in every 24 hours for a simple uh, clean, uh, a play online mode to your games. Yeah, and it's even if it's a single player um, game, which would traditionally be an offline kind of game, like we well, use Nintendo Super Mario Brothers, you'd have to be online still. Much useless than the PlayStation 4. Much less powerful. But I think that's still, I think that still kinda of goes the same thing. Much less useless or yeah. much use a more useless console. Um, all right. We have the Kinect. Connect is required. Again, you're going to have a camera shoved in your face twenty four seven, regardless of playing the game or not. And let's break this down. Okay, because this is very interesting. You have a camera in your face 24 hours. So I'm going to say this. Watch what you do in front of that camera because you have it. You have people monitoring you. Well, so I don't, don't worry eating Cheetos naked, I watching don't know, porn. I don't know if we'd go that far, honestly. Um, it could, though. The, the, what I've heard about it, not even a year ago, it was somewhere within the last year when... Microsoft made a patent claim for technology where it would use the Xbox Connect camera to monitor how many people would be viewing a movie. Let's say, you know, he's got four kids, and I've got two kids, and that's four adults. So that's a total of ten people right off the bat. What if I had the Xbox, three, uh, the Xbox One popped in a Blu-ray disc to watch a movie, and all of a sudden we get a screen that says... I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do that. HAL 3000 is getting a little freaking annoying. Uh, basically saying that, you know, right there on your DVD, the, the part that mocks us all, telling us that if you pro, uh, play this movie in front of a large group of people, you're violating the license of that movie because it's only, to, it's only supposed to be for home entertainment. But if the more people you show, it starts qualifying more into public entertainment, like theaters and stuff like that. The rumor is the Xbox might be implementing a DRM in favor of the MPAA, you bastards. And that will allow that will not allow you to show the movie to more than so many people. So, I don't like So it. maybe it not a big watch big. of twenty four hours, but still don't be sitting in front of the television it's, naked eating Cheetos. That's it's gross. Yeah. Cheetos they get in the weird places. <laughs> I mean seriously, this whole X the Connect thing is kind of big brotherish, especially with the whole Prism thing that the government's been doing with the uh, uh, um, Homeland Security, and yeah. I, I just ah. too governmental. Yeah. Okay. Any game developers are now, from what I understand, are in part with the next part when they're not part of the community. community. Yet. Basically, Microsoft is <laughs> not embracing the indie developers. Stupid. Duh. The indie developers are the guys who are making games that are just kind of like like great example. Angry Birds was not made by a big production co production company. <laughs> Angry Birds is a game that really I know a lot of you guys like Angry Birds. I don't. But here, but I'm the thing fine. about Angry Birds though is that you and a know, movie. Well, but getting away from that, <laughs> Angry Birds is one of those games that you would never ever see, even on the Nintendo DS, which had a touch screen interface. You'd never have saw it on that even because it simply was too radical of a design. You're throwing birds at blocks 
to get to the bad pigs to kill them. It doesn't sound like a fun game. Now, granted, like Nathan said, he's not a big fan of it. I, but it's catchable. It's, Everybody it, likes playing it. I enjoy it from time to time. My kids enjoy it. It's a game that your kids can sit down and play and not be, you have to be worried about because it's so cartoony. Yeah. So and that, There's not a large amount of violence on it other than a bird hitting a pig. But again, it's it that's boils, Muppet stuff. But again, it boils down to the fact that they were indie developers, and when Microsoft is basically shunning them at this point, they're not openly letting them in on production. Because I mean, is that also a possibility where the 140 games are coming from for PlayStation? Because I've heard rumors that placed, uh, Sony is going indie developers. Uh... So maybe you know you, you want these kind of people in there. They they're gonna they're the next Mario. They're the next Sonic. They're the next Halo. And if you push them to the side and say you're nothing, I don't care, go away. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Okay, I'm gonna read this one slow so you guys hear every bit of this. There was only five gigabytes of RAM designed for the game, and the other three gigabytes or for the system operation, which we talked about at the beginning of the show. That is cutting so huge into the games uh, that it's ridiculous. Like I said, DDR3 is slower. You need all that stuff for your sounds and your and your color and your sharpness and your images. If you want a good game, you need all that space. Another big one for you, and nobody's liked this ever since we went to uh, optical media, DVD, CDs, DVD, uh, Blu-ray. The more RAM you have, means the more data that can be read off the disk, which leads to less load times. Who here likes watching a blank screen that says loading? Nope. Who likes to see a screen that goes from one transition with a short load time right into the next level? Exactly. It stinks when you have load screens. I remember when uh, the Sega uh, CD came out with the Genesis, and it was a 1x optical CD drive. Load times on those full motion video games usually were anywhere from a minute, and in some cases, usually in the floppy crap games, I've heard up to five minutes. Correct me if I'm wrong, folks, in the comments below, but five minute load times? Yeah, could you imagine that on the Xbox One? I don't see that happening. By the time it's done loading, you won't even want to play the game. Yeah, but I don't see that happening with the Xbox One. It's still a powerful system, but for, uh, 5 gigabytes versus 8 gigabytes, and the fact that it's DDR3 versus DDR5. DDR3, it's a Volkswagen bug. DDR5 is a freaking Ferrari. Yeah, you do that. This is for the Xbox fans. Okay, you will still have to pay for Xbox Gold for multiple player and access to apps and extra. Yeah, this is kind of ticking everybody off. I have a, I have a uh, Hulu Plus and a Netflix account. As do I. Uh, $8 a month per. Yep. So here's the problem. If you don't know about it, look into it. Yes, we'll, hopefully we'll get some advertisement uh, affiliate. Do a show, stuff. do some shows on that. Um, so anyway... Xbox requires you to pay the monthly fee for Xbox Gold to be able to watch Netflix. You're already paying for Netflix, but now you have to pay Microsoft for the privilege of watching Netflix <laughs> on your Xbox. Sony says, you got an Xbox? Oh, you got a Netflix account? Cool. Here, it's right here. Watch it. Cool. You don't have an Xbox? Oh, you don't have a PlayStation Network account? Oh, that's all right. You got internet, right? Okay, cool. You're good. You're good. Watch your Netflix. Have fun. Yay, Sony. You like us. You really like us. Okay, we got the uh, connect app uh, never actually shuts off. off. Remember the whole thing, don't sit um, and in you your couch, disable it. Which then means you're disabling your system. Your console becomes practically nothing more than a doorstop. Pointless. So I'm again, worthless. this means don't sit naked in front of your TV eating Cheetos because the Kinect is always watching you. Okay, next we have installments of the game on the hard drive. Mandatory installation of the game is kind of pointless. I mean, if I wanted to install a game to my hard drive, I'd just be a PC gamer. Yeah, pretty much. The whole goal, the whole thing that makes console gaming a joy, 
was the fact that I could sit there and plug in a cartridge or a CD or a DVD and play my game without having to go through a 5 to 30 minute long installation process, eating up my hard drive space. Now Microsoft is making you install the games to the hard drive. Why? I can tell you why. 5 gigabytes, why? Because less load time that way. But again, 500 gigabytes can be eaten up quickly. Quickly. Especially since these games are going to be coming on Blu-ray now. Officially, Microsoft has adopted Blu-ray, so the Xbox One games are going to come on Blu-ray, which is anywhere from around 30 gigabytes per disc. So imagine half of that being installed to your Xbox One, and you have ended up creating a good collection of, let's say, 30 games. Let's say it installs 15 gigabytes worth of data per game. You know, 15 times 30 is uh, 450 gigabytes worth of stuff. Uh-oh. Oops, there goes most of your hard drive. Yeah. Okay, next. Not bad. Not Compatibility. Bad. Yeah. Uh, whatever 360 games, you will not be able to play it on the Xbox 360. This is a universal Ew. This is a universal con so far. Even the Wii U, it's backwards compatible with previous Wii, and it's got the virtual console for old Nintendo and everything. So I don't know. I, you can say that's backwards compatible, but not the same way that everybody it's like, I got an NES card controller, you plug it in. No. Like I said, backwards compatibility is dead. It's not going to happen. But I do want to give you a real quick hint. PS3, most people, most people that own a PS3 do not know this. You can play PS1, old PlayStation games, on the uh, PS3. does not matter which version. Any PS3. Make sure you're hearing this, just in case you have PlayStation games. There are some still some great Metal Gear Solid, the oh, first yeah. Metal Gear Solid. Love classic. that game. Um, there is the Crash Bandicoot games, again, classics. But the PlayStation 1, or is uh, you can play PlayStation 1 games on PS3 because the PlayStation 1 processor and the chipset was, I believe, turned into a, what's called a system on a chip. It's basically nothing more than a small board that functions uh, the same as the original console. Sony did this as a means of making PlayStation 2 and 3 development cheaper because they used that stuff as a means to uh, be able to control the USB and the uh, various other ports on the console. So that is why they're backwards compatible. And I'm expecting the PS4 to be PS1 backwards compatible because why change something that's not broke? Do you want to get this last one? I know, I know, yeah, I know you want to do it. Only 17 games exclusive to the Xbox One in the works. No word yet on how many will be out at the late, later date. So we have 17 games that are known to be pop, popping out, but I want to change that word from exclusive to not quite exclusive. Uh, for example, Call of Duty Ghost. Yeah. It's also it's not exclusive. So Microsoft wants you to think it is. Yeah. Only some of the content is exclusive. The game is still play part of a game. Well, the whole game is still going to be available for both consoles, but it's just that each console is going to have exclusive content. Their version. Stuff. It's going to have downloadable stuff that you can only get with that particular system. But I wouldn't be surprised, you know, six months down the road after the game's been released for the consoles, you can still get it for the other one. Okay. And only 17 games versus 140. Like I said earlier, how many of those are the indie developers? But yeah. still, those are games. 140. 17. And we don't know when the rest are going to be released for the Xbox One. I mean, okay, so like we said, very long list of pros, very short list of pros. 120 cookies versus 17. What do you want to eat? Yeah. Or at least 140 cookies that you know you're going to be getting over a course of a time versus 17 cookies and then wonder when you're going to get your next one. Yeah. That's, a, that's the way it goes. But... Like we said, that's pretty much everything right yeah. there. I mean, we you said earlier, the pros for the PS4 was just like, wow, and I loved them. Cons, you know, it's one of those. Very, little, very little. And I wouldn't really consider them bad cons. They're kind of no-brainers. Yeah. No, then no. for the uh, Xbox One, you had very little pros. And I don't really think they're pros because the only one I thought was a real pro is the smartphone one. The other one, like the gold membership tr being transferred, does that, does that's, I got a question, does that kill your Xbox gold account on your 360, forcing you to give it up, which is kind of a part of the word, bitch. It's a um, bummer. You, uh, Skype, I don't call, I don't consider that a pro. I got Skype on all my devices, but I rarely use it. Um, voice commands, that's cool. And I saw it live on the show, uh, their demonstration, with the crowd noise. It worked beautifully. 
But was that actually working, or was somebody behind the scenes going? Well, with all those voice command, it's you know, I want this, this, and this, and then you, I can't do that, Dave. Hello, Siri for Xbox. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then the Connect is included with the Xbox One bundle. It's again the whole problem of Big Brother. Yeah, and then a buttload of cons. I mean, and these were solid cons. A couple of them were no-brainer cons, where yeah. it's kind of like you know, like backwards compatibility. It's it's there. It's a, it's a thing that we have we've been dealing with since the the current generation of consoles because. And honestly, it's been statistically proven that most people will take their previous system and games and trade them in to GameStop and other stores so they can get the latest and greatest. It's very few. It's people like myself that collect like Ataris and my and I keep all my games. Nintendo baby, yeah. love Nintendo. I am a Nintendo junkie, Atari, Sega, Super Sega. Those things, you know. Love it. You, you keep them around. We're the kind of people who keep them around because we love those games. A treasure's sake. But. The, you know, a lot of people, play. but a lot of people just turn them in and don't worry about it. So, just we're, 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 we're that's just another thing I want to say. Little kids griping about how old the Nintendo is when those things were hard as heck. I go, you remember when you'd play like Yo Doid and you get hit once and you have to go all the way back to the beginning. But on like Playstations and Wii's. You can die a hundred times before you got to start over, and they say gaming's hard we, now. Yeah, it, no, nowadays it's, it's lazy. The map. Yeah, it's not as easy. How to get to point A to point B instead of worrying about getting hit by a bird or a newspaper man and going, you know, five minutes, fifteen minutes, clear back to the beginning. And the worst part, we didn't know what save your game meant back in the day. I'm a tar I'm you better play for a game Gina. <clears throat> I'm older than Nathan. And I had I grew up on Atari's. Petfall. Saving your game was a fanciful delight that we all dreamt about that we'd one day have while playing games like uh, Pitfall and then dying whatever. Or games like Pitfall 2, which actually had a beginning and an actual end. But let's say mom calls you or you know, even pause was a yeah. thing that we dreamt about. Pause. Atari. So the, uh, the 5200 and 7800 Ataris brought that on finally, and everybody was just like, this is revolutionary! And it was! Pausing your game so you can go answer mom real quick to do dishes or do your paper route, and then come back without, you know, have to start over. But, you know, I agree. Gamers nowadays don't, you know, the young kids that are growing up with the games, it's easy. easy. It is. Um, you spent hours and hours, like Final Fantasy back in the day was a you know, little more open, where nowadays they're all just cinematic adventures. Yeah. I don't call them role-playing games. I don't even call them Which JRPGs. Which isn't bad just... for people that like that, that can get you to a um, controlling movie experience. But mm -hmm. some people want to have their mind pushed to the brink. I used to be considered a hardcore gamer. And nowadays I'm more of a casual gamer based on the kind of games I play, the kind that aren't the modern style, but I just still prefer my old school. I play for fun, but I but am that's a rent for another day. That is a rent for another day. We'll have okay, so we're going to wrap this up here. What is better, the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One? Which one goes head-to-head -head better for the customer for yeah. games? Let's say uh, we're going to go from this one as a perspective of a first-time buyer. Uh, let's you know, No Xbox Live account, no PlayStation account. You're going right. to buy the console based off what you're wanting. Before I go on, we, we do this, I just want to say, when Sony and uh, Microsoft both did their shows revealing the Xbox One and the uh, PlayStation 4, respective to their company, um, Sony's was more like, we got the PlayStation 4. It plays games. It plays this kind of game. It plays that kind of game. Look at this game. Look at that game. Hey, there's more games. Oh, by the way, you can watch Netflix on it. Microsoft does their show, and it felt more like you can watch sports, you can watch movies, you can talk to friends, you can call people. Xbox Live, or Xbox now hears you. It does this, it does that. Oh, and you can play games. Yeah. It was a complete reversal, and I'm sorry, Microsoft, it's a video game console, or it's supposed to be, not a media box that plays games. It's all these games, but you can watch movies. Then you go over, you can watch all these movies, but you can have games. I'd rather be the other way around. I'd yeah. rather be... You're going to play games! And watch movies. That's If you're going to have a game system, 
You want to play games. You don't want to watch movies. You want to play games. See, uh, so going from the perspective of a first, uh, first-time first buyer that wants a gaming console, not a media box, because that's what the Xbox One is. It's honestly just it's a fancy media box that plays beautiful games. Personally, PlayStation 4. PlayStation 4. As a gamer, whether it, 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 casual it, it, or hardcore. It's that simple. Yeah. It's that simple. As a casual or hardcore gamer, it's... It's there for you. It does and you right. might think the the price is a little high, but did you not hear all that? Oh, all the pros. Speaking of the price, we didn't say that. Yeah. Xbox One is going to be, and I'm going to round up to the nearest dollar, which is basically one penny off. Yeah, five hundred dollars. How much is the PS4 going to cost? Four hundred dollars. I remember when the Xbox 360 came out; it was three hundred. Or no, four hundred dollars. Restrictions and for five hundred. Gaming One for four. Exactly. And even if you add on the Xbox, uh, the PlayStation camera, you're only adding sixty extra dollars. You're still saving forty bucks. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm excited about both because they're both either positive or negatively making bounds into the futures. It's just overall, PlayStation Four just sounds so much better for. A first-time gamer or a, and it's hardware. You know, it's hardware sounds more. All you gamers, you know, all you elite gamers. And you look at the hardware specs for both consoles. The Xbox, uh, the PS4 has lead, uh, better technology built right in. It's just a better system. So anyway, that wraps up our first show here for Notes and Nerds. It was Thanks a lot of fun. Uh, we had a great time. Make sure you uh, subscribe down there and uh, add your comments, anything like that. Ask us any questions. Don't forget you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, yes. and Google+. Plus. We're all over the place. We are everywhere. We're like two to... Uh, well, I won't make that knowledge because we're a family show. Yeah. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a blast. I'm Eric. I'm Nathan. And kumbaya, little toads.